G'day, g'day, one and all. My name's Adam Elliott and um, I've prepared a speech this afternoon, so I've had time to do that as well. Um, so I'd like to read a speech that I've prepared about the glorious day that we've all had and I'd like to share with you some of the insight I've gained about Eureka Day and the uh, wonderful people who have attended today's celebrations. Uh, just firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Preeti and Jason from IOPS for generously offering me a lift up here, so I appreciate that so much, especially so early in the morning. But I'd like to start, so, well, it all started with the Dawn Memorial at 4am. Who can forget Rick Simpson's epic 15 minute musing about everything from John Howard to Taliban, Tony Abbott, and all in between. What was peculiarly, what was particularly funny was his statement that because Tony Abbott being a misogynist, it must be agony for him when he goes home to a wife and three daughters. That's a good point, Rick. That is a good point. I didn't think about that. But anyway, it was a great speech, but a little long. So, but most of you don't know that the reason it was so long-winded was actually he was filling in time. He was trying to help. He was trying to help ensure that the speech is finished at 6 a.m. So he thought that if he spoke, he thought that because we all spoke too briefly, that he would balance the scales on that one. Good effort. Uh, yeah, so during those dawn commemoration speeches, um, Mick mentioned something in his speech that really kind of ate away at me for the whole day, and it still sort of eats away at me now, Mick. And that was that, and he said, quote, the city of Ballarat does not remember Eureka Day in any meaningful way. And it was a great speech, and also it was a great speech made by made about Anne Hall, who I'd never heard of, and also Bill made a great speech about colonial attack. So, but my favourite speech was made by Jacob, a lecturer, political prisoner, the most senior minister in the West Papuan Independent Movement, currently not in an Indonesian jail. So, good work, Jacob. <laughs> um, he said. He said many great things, but he said two particularly great things and that I thought were salient. And he said that when we lose sovereignty, when we lose sovereignty, we lose hope. And, and he also said that we are the peacemakers, not the UN. So I thought that resonated with me pretty well. Thanks, Jacob. <laughs> a very inspiring man and um, a great mentor to many people. So. Um, uh, yeah, I highly admire you. Uh, Graham Dunstan. Uh, Graham Dunstan's burning of uh, Maurice Newman's effigy was uh, epic. Uh, you have effigy designing and making down to an art form. I can still, I can still hear his words as Mr. Newman smouldered and burnt. Let him know. <laughs> I can't say it's too funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let, him, let him know he still has the curse of Eureka upon him. <clears throat> I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the Canadian dude, uh, Jeremy. He rode uh, 12,000 kilometres across the USA, Canada, UK, Ireland, Australia and New Zealand uh, in just six months. And I did the math on that. I worked it out. 12,000 kilometres in six months equals about 80 kilometres a day. So that's almost Melbourne to Ballarat daily. So I did that in, um, in order to raise you know, awareness of West Papuan sovereignty. And, um, and he did that pretty much through the whole Western world, which I think is worth a round of applause for Jeremy. <laughs> He's gone, but he's not forgotten. Fair enough. Um, I'd like to thank Margaret and her daughter, Prithanthia. Uh, they put on a wonderful communal breakfast. Uh, they brought around for all of us. Margaret told me a quick story. Margaret told me a story about uh, Dr. Batman Jelly. Ba ba and uh, he was jailed in 1984, five years after the Iranian revolution. And, um, it's quite an inspiring story, but it briefly goes like this. He chose to stay 
was a political prisoner in jail because he wanted to help sick prisoners. And I just thought, yeah, like the longer story is very touching. And thank you for that story. It was very, it's good. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, our West Papuan brothers and sisters, uh, Amos Malkias, aka Ian, <laughs> uh, Peter, Anton, Maria, and Anselmos. Um, uh, in the morning, at about like six, um, they were jamming. And I was playing this beautiful song by uh, the first non the first non-violent activist in West Papua named Arnold Up, and um, they recorded a song of freedom. He, Arnold Up, when he was in prison, recorded a song of freedom on cassette just before he died. So it was his last ever recording, and um, I'm putting in a request, and I hope that the guys can come up on stage and play that song because it's very moving. Anyway, that's just my opinion. And before I move on, I'd just like to say who can forget the Freedom Fertilla, uh, Lake Air to Cairns by bus, Cairns to Thursday Island by sailing ship, uh, Thursday Island to Indonesian waters by, uh, by helicopter, and then in a dinghy to meet with the West Papuan elders and hand over the sacred water of Lake Air. That is a road trip, so well done, guys. That's excellent. Uh, nextly, I'd like to uh, the, I'd like to give thanks to the uh, Eureka Day medalists. Um, congratulations to you all, uh, especially Elizabeth Connolly. I thought her um, it was a very amazing and beautiful speech, and uh, truly deserved honour for a um, a tireless community activist. So congratulations to her. Uh, also, <laughs> I didn't see you there. Um, Gary Foley as well, I don't think he's in the house. Anyway, that's all good. Uh, Gary Foley, um, I, I don't know him very well, but I think he lived up to his rep reputation as a, a rebel rouser when he said, um, quote, another quote, um, I'd love to stuff up so much that I'd receive an Australia Day medal or Queen's birthday medal just so I could tell him where to shove it. That seems very typical of someone like Gary Foley. Anyway, so, nearly done. Uh, so the walk to City Hall to see the Australia flag waving above on the main flagpole was, uh, yeah, quite a, uh, it's quite a different, yeah, it's quite challenging to, um, you know, to, to think about. But uh, while we were there, Bill, Bill Dello, um, I don't know if he's here either, but he gave a, um, he gave a great speech, probably one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. Um, so if you were there to hear that speech, it was like, it was one of the great speeches on par with, um, uh, so very rousing and powerful. And like in it, he just basically said, quote, enough is enough is enough. Um, we, you know, we need to find new ways to communicate with each other and, uh, you know, create a stronger social democracy and, I kind of amused about that, and it was yeah, it was really powerful. But thanks, Bill. Only two pages. Uh, so it was a great pleasure to meet uh, Auntie Ellen, uh, the wife of Dr. Joe, uh, a very beautiful kindred spirit among us. So uh, it was a pleasure to meet you, Auntie Ellen. So thank you. Um, at the cemetery, uh, yeah, we learn about the history, and, uh, and we, well, we, I suppose the first thing we learn when you get there is how history is rewritten. Um, and the seven diggers buried, you know, were left in a memorial that was uh, in disrepair, and uh, with the current monument, our British war grave. Uh, but it was good to know that the quality of stone in the diggers memorial is superior to that of the soldiers memorial. <laughs> So I'd like to thank Rick Simpson for that anecdote, and uh, yeah, I'll sleep well because of that. Thanks. Um, also, um, I also met another person, and I met a great, a great man named Mark. Can Mark, can you just stand up for a sec? Let everyone know who you are. That's Mark. He, um, he likes to walk his cat on a lead around the park on a 16-foot lead around the park. A very unique, very unique. 
Uh, he lives in his van, travelling around again with his cat and uh, on a 16-foot tethered lead. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Anyway, his cat's... The reason I mention that is because his cat's name is Monty Miller, a um, Eureka rebel. And um, Mark was telling me about a great poem that was written by about Monty Miller by Vic Williams, a, um, a communist. And I'd just like to read just one verse. Uh, it goes like this: Are you ready, Monty Miller, for the war? Are you ready, Monty Miller, for the words beyond the sea? Have ruled that all the diggers must pay a license fee. That would make it conscript labour. Take back the rights you've won. But the diggers are defiant, and now the redcoats come. That's just a sample from the poem. So we're quite moving. And just to finish. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to finish off by briefly talking about what I mentioned at the start, and that was Mick's comment about um, you know Ballarat not um, fully remembering, like you know, remembering its history. And um, Dr. Joe made a great comment at the Museum of Australian Democracy, and um, I suppose he talked about how the councils don't understand the drawing power of this flag and that. People, kind of, you know, in general, have little understanding of the essence of the flag, and and many are ashamed of the rebellion. So, for me personally, I'd like to say in conclusion that um, we are at the forefront of truly recognising the essence of Ballarat's history, and let's hope that, for me personally, I'd like to see what we do. Uh, I'd like to see the integration of our day that we organise with Ballarat's official tourism events to create, you know, an inclusive and memorable day, uh, memorable day for one and all. Thank you. Yeah.